Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Robert Jamison with Studio Robert Jamison outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's great to talk with you. This is a really beautiful home. This is your family home. You did some really cool stuff with this. Why don't you give me a little bit of overview description of the home to, to kick it off? Sure. Uh, this house, it's in suburban Philadelphia. It was built in 1968 by Robert McElroy, and he built hundreds of these kind of deck homes, which some might call like a California contemporary or whatever, but most of them are built into a really beautiful site, but usually very hilly site. So it's a two-story house. And the house was in pretty good shape given it's, you know, 50 year age at the time we bought it. However, the kitchen and the bathrooms were original. So those were the, the main things that we wanted to tackle. And then we, we made some other cosmetic updates, primarily to the family room in the lower level. Let's let's start with that. That's such an appealing space because you repurpose some gym floor, which is so cool. You don't see that very often. It just gives it a fun vibe right off the bat. I had relationships with some reclaimed wood vendors, so I reached out to Jeff Jansen of Urban Evolutions. They're based in Wisconsin. He immediately sent me back two images of gyms in Wisconsin. One had more of a brown paint scheme and the other one had sort of these reds and blues. Said yes on the reds and blues one. I worked with him to create a mix of 25% painted boards, you know, kind of a mix of reds and blues, and then 75% of just the, the feel of Hardwood. I'm curious about how you laid it out and how much effort did that take to kind of dial it in and agree on, okay, this is what we're doing. The guys that we had installing it, they dry laid it. They didn't set anything. Let me kind of come back and mix and match and move boards around. So it felt balanced and the movement was right and the reds and blues and the little tick marks and everything that are cool about the floor were in the, in the right spaces and kind of running through doorways and stuff like that. And it's beautiful, like very thick. It's one inch thick maple flooring. So they were like, you want to refinish it, right? And plane it down so it was brand new. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, we're keeping the color. Yeah, so that was, that was like one of the things that scared me at first. Tell me a little bit more about the space in terms of, are, are there any uh, new built-ins or anything else that was structural that you did in the space? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is really just the insertion of furniture and, and fixtures. So it serves kind of multi-purpose. It's sort of mudroom, walk-in from the garage, my office space, and then a seating area for sort of family room, playroom. So we have a sectional sofa that's actually broken in two because there's a slider out to that lower deck. The sectional works as kind of a dividing line between the family room and the office. The table that we're using as sort of my workspace desk that's a 12 foot long reclaimed desk that we got. So I think one of the themes that kind of flows through our house is a balance of modern and kind of reclaimed materials. You know, things like that desk or you see the bookshelf we have has some, you know, kind of weird found objects on the shelf and the old orange spring. And there's a, a chair in the space next to the television that uh, was made by an artist. And it's, it's basically cast concrete in a very modern form, but it has a, an old style chair sort of cast into it. So it's just, we, we always like that kind of play on modern and old, old and new, I guess. All right, let's go up to the kitchen. Kitchen's on the, the next floor up, yeah? Yep. Let's, let's check out the kitchen. Between the kitchen and the dining room, there was an island kind of where our peninsula island is now. Above it was built-in cabinets that basically visually closed off the, the kitchen from the dining. And that was literally the first thing on the first day that my wife and I yanked down. <laughs> Uh, to open those two things up. Let's go into some of the materials. The backsplash on either side of that beautiful window above the sink almost has like a water feel to it. I feel like I'm almost looking at like a stream going through the greenery. <laughs> we were really drawn to these tiles. They're made by a woman named Deborah Osborne of Klee Tiles, and they're individually dip dyed. So they're sort of handmade tiles that then are dipped into an indigo pigment. And so each tile is literally has its own unique pattern. And then we had the idea to sort of lay them 
kind of nose to nose, if you will, and create this datum line around the kitchen. What about some of your other choices in the space in terms of your countertop? Is that, is that a soapstone in there? What, what's the countertop in there? Yeah, it's a soapstone countertop. And again, it was kind of the same thing. I think we were looking for something that had a very natural feel to it. The thought was we, we kind of started with the cabinets, which were thought to be like almost neutral, like nothing white, just plain white cabinets. And then the idea that we're going to sort of everything around it is going to have more of a tactile, natural feel. So between the tile, the countertops, we also, we found these petrified wood pulls, you know, so each pull has a very unique natural pattern to it. You know, so that against the white is the thing that really speaks, you know, as opposed to the cabinets themselves. So and I think we kind of just took an inverted look at materiality where normally it's like, okay, what are the cabinets? And then everything kind of is an accessory to that. And instead we're like, let's make the cabinets be the background to the other things. I love that. I love the petrified wood uh, hardware. That's awesome. What about your approach with the floor tile in the kitchen? We went with a uh, Carrera marble uh, mosaic tile and kind of a herringbone pattern. Some of it might have been out of concern just for cracking and not wanting to go too big, you know, in an old house with wood floor joists and knowing there might be some movement. Also from a color perspective, kind of a counterbalance to the soapstone countertops. So tell me about your lighting in here. So you get, looks like some nice natural light, but you are in a hilly area where you probably get a lot of light certain times of the day and then it goes fairly dark other times of the day. So how did you deal with lighting in the space? Yeah, so there's a skylight in the kitchen, which helps a ton. Um, we get lots of natural light. And then we really just kept the lighting super simple. We run a line of track kind of along both sides above the island and the countertop, and it just kind of disappears. And then we have four pendants above the dining table, which are sort of a milk glass designed by Terrence Woodgate. The interesting thing about them, they have a fabric core that connects them to the ceiling and three of them are just sort of a gray fabric and one of them is bright red. Kind of relates to your flooring too. A exactly. Red, a little yeah. red stripe in the flooring, a little red stripe in the, the cord. That's, that's cool. Tell me more about this dining table and the chairs around the dining table. That gives me a totally different feeling than the cooking portion of the kitchen. I'm on vacation at the dining table. I feel like I'm <laughs> in a different place. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of differentiating the spaces, like right next to each other, creating a different mood through lighting and furniture to sort of differentiate the space and have it, you know, have a different vibe. The table is a sort of uh, live edge dining table with a more reclaimed or older look to it. The dining chairs were handmade by a friend of ours named Leslie Oshman, who has a company called Swarm, based in the Netherlands. And she purchases uh, re old paintings, buys these old sort of mid-century modern school chairs, and then she takes the paintings and sort of collages them onto the seat and back and then laminates them with sort of polyurethane or whatever to make them finish. So each chair is unique, it has its own you know, look to it. That is awesome that someone that creative is doing that. So uh, you got time for one more space? Sure. Let's, let's check out the bathroom. So this is your uh, guest bathroom or master bath? What is it? Master bathroom. And I think we were looking to have kind of more of a spa like feel to it. It's modern, but again, we're still using um, sort of natural materials. And there's a Carrera tile floor with small mosaic tiles that then go up the back wall of the shower. And then on the side walls, we have a natural slate wall tile that's larger format. We knew we wanted to have a, a rain shower, but the ceilings are kind of low in the space. And so we found a, a rain shower that's actually a chrome plate that's flush mounted to the ceiling. And the rain shower is literally just flush with the ceiling, comes right out. I love how you can go in there and you could spray that down. There's almost no drywall surface whatsoever in there. There isn't. It's only the ceiling. <laughs> I do this a lot, I think, for bathrooms. I also like the tiled walls. I think, I don't know, for me, it's just like it should be a kind of, in ki kitchens in the same way, it should be sort of antiseptic spaces. 
and hard, so lots of hard surfaces, um, I think are always good. Any other little tricks in there? Is the floor heated or anything like that? Uh, yeah, the floor is heated, which uh, we love. Always recommend that that to clients. Tell me about your choice of the wall mount sink and why that kind of helps in a small space like this. I almost exclusively use uh, wall mounted vanities. I just really, I think they make the spaces feel bigger by getting up above the floor. I use a wall mounted faucet. I tend to prefer those. I just feel like they have a little more, more elevated look. They're easier to clean. You don't have to kind of clean around them. The floor is allowed to run fully to the wall. And you know, this particular vanity, we don't have drawers across the full face of it. They're sort of asymmetrically loaded on the vanity. That's something that I try to incorporate into or rec recommend to a lot of my clients. The whole experience of this home is very much like a, a modern, well, tree house isn't doing it justice, but it's a, that tree house vibe in a modern home. Really nice. Thanks. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's what we love about the house. Just it's so connected to, to nature and the inside of the outside. So that's one of the, where this house, it just inherently does that already. It was just easy. What a great space. Thank you so much, Robert. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on this beautiful home. And I hope you get many, many years out of it. And uh, can't wait to see more of your projects with your clients in and around the great state of Pennsylvania. Great. Thanks so much. Okay. Take care.